Hello, I'm JW, and this time we have more old stuff to look at, and the item today is this switch, and it's actually one of these voltage-operated uh, earth leakage circuit breakers, of the style that's no longer used and hasn't been in use since the uh, early 1980s. Now, this particular one is not in the best of condition, but uh, due to the rarity of the item, it was worth obtaining. Uh, it's actually made by Siemens Brothers, and uh, let's just have a look inside. Now, let's just say one of these uh, voltage-operated circuit breakers, of the type we'd use to cover the whole installation. And let's see, it's got the uh, Siemens Brothers logo in the centre. Uh, rating are 60 amps, 250 volts, and uh, 50 hertz AC. And it's got the large on and off switch in the middle, and then the test button at the top here, which unfortunately is somewhat uh, jammed and sticky. And uh, terminal-wise, we've got the two terminals at the top here, which are marked uh, L and N for line and neutral. And on the bottom, Again, got the two terminals here, though this one's actually marked P for phase. Now, of course, neutral over there. And then in the centre here, we've got the two terminals, which would be for the earthing rod and the installation itself. So we've got F here, which is the frame or the metalwork of the installation. And then E here for the earth electrode. So this is a bit grubby, so a bit difficult to see, but uh, there we go. So P, F, E, and N at the end. And we've got the remains of some wiring attached. Now, this is actually missing the covers, which would have gone over the terminals here and here. That presumably would have been a uh, brown plastic, just the same. And uh, basically, it's your two in power in at the top. And of course, the corresponding terminals at the bottom. And then your earth rod connects to one of these and the installation to the other. And as in the other videos, these things trip when the voltage between these two terminals exceeds about 50 volts. And that would occur if there was a fault to earth somewhere in the installation. Now, this one does kind of work, but uh, there are some issues, so that's sort of the on position and the uh, off there. And if we're going to do this nut here, we're going to have a look inside. The back can certainly just a plain cover, so nothing doing there. Now, this came from someone on eBay, and uh, while it's not in the best of condition, it's only worth getting this because uh, this is the sort of thing you're pretty much never going to see again. So let's see if we can just extract the lid and see what's inside. Now the lid here, just first of all, we've got a nice diagram inside which shows the wiring. So let's see what here, the uh, coil impedance of 300 ohms, uh, designed for maximum earth resistance of 500. Again, here's your internal wiring. So we've got the uh, two connections there, the line of neutral and then the uh, called phase and neutral at the bottom, which are incoming outgoing connections. And then your uh, test resistor here, and then the test key, or button as I've called it there, essentially when you press out it just moves across to uh, energise the coil there. And of course the uh, trip mechanism then will magnetically pull a little bar or lever to disconnect the double pole switch. And of course that uh, disconnects the supply to your installation. And made in England at the bottom. And again the outside is just the on and off, the ratings and the test hole at the top there, the wording there. Not entirely sure what this recess would be for, there's nothing in it. I don't know if I've had something, uh, sort of label or something stuck in there, but in any case it's uh, not there now. And the whole thing is, uh, it's not too bad, I mean it's uh, a bit dull on that side, but uh, it is at least complete, other than the missing end covers. Now here's the thing itself, and we've got the two contacts, one is here and one here, and these are in the open position at the moment, so actually there's a bit of a gap there. This one seems to have lost uh, some of its springiness, so uh, not necessarily as good as new, but when the uh, switch is actually pressed down, it's actually pushing this bar down, which then just uh, pushes the contacts closed. So as that comes down, it will just uh, press that bar into the closed position. Now, so unfortunately this is uh, missing a few bits, and this bar here appears to have got no spring on it anymore, so anyway, that's your open there. And as it's pushed down, it closes both of those contacts. Now the switch mechanism here, this is the bit that's sort of uh, somewhat broken. There's that hooks there, and then there should have been a spring or something underneath to hold that in position. Uh, tripping coil at the top here. You'll see the wires coming off the top there and over here. They actually go into the back, so I'll have a look in there in a minute. And uh, you notice this little slot here and that peg underneath. And when you actually pull this down, so it's actually resting against the little peg there, and then the tripping part of the coil here will actually attract the 
bar here and pull that up, which will then release that, causing this piece in the center to move. So see that just releases that. And then this thing will uh, spring out of place, releasing the bar at the bottom. So there that is again. And this thing uh, essentially just turns backwards a certain distance. So that just will uh, release and that will roll backwards, releasing the actual catch. Then it will just come back into the locked position again afterwards. Now a bit of rust here on the end here. And so this has got no uh, or very little spring underneath it, so this bark is uh, popping out of position. But of course, originally it would have actually been pushed forward with the springs, making sure the contacts are open. So this one's a bit uh, dodgy. And uh, nothing much else to say on this side, so uh, let's have a look inside on the back and let's see what's connected in there. So inside then we've just got this plate which removes from the back, and then uh, we've got the resistor here which will be for the test button, just to limit the current through that coil. And we've got our connections down the bottom here, these appear to be rubber insulated wires, so they're in fairly uh, reasonable condition, although uh, some deterioration of the surface certainly has occurred there. And so that will be the test resistor, and those wires just go through the other side. And uh, bizarrely this one appears to be a plastic covered insulator, and so those two are rubber, so certainly inconsistent. So two tunnels here for the frame and earth connection, so that's where the test voltage or the 50 volts would appear to trip the thing, and those wires go up to here and through the top there. Let's see that one comes straight through onto the coil there, and then the other one comes up here, and this is actually the testing switch, so you've got the button here, that just pushes that rod, and just changes over between the two contacts, so it's the middle and the top one, or the middle and the bottom one. So in normal circumstances, this wire here is the one that will be connected across the coil along with that one. And then when you press the switch, it's the wire here via the resistor. And let's see, that goes on to the uh, live terminal over here. So that reminisce of red wire. So then you get a controlled current going through the coil to trip that. And in terms of the top here, both have two screws, and the same at the bottom, and even the uh, Earth and frame ones have two screws as well. And I'm not entirely sure what's going on in here. It looks like uh, something has been stuck over the top, but actually this is actually inside the plastic, so it's presumably some kind of fibrous cloth or whatever that was moulded in when this uh, actual bar was constructed. So it's not a surface thing you can remove, it's actually an integral part of the material itself. Now let's see if this does actually still work, as in the uh, coil actually here uh, will attract the bar. So what we'll do is just attach a uh, power supply and we'll just go directly across the two terminals on the back here. So let's go into uh, that one. And again, just going on the uh, other side here. I'm not going to connect this to the mains because it's obviously been damaged at some point. And of course there's no guarantee that uh, it may actually be safe. But of course there's a possibility of the resistor exploding with the mains power going across that. So uh, just basically across the two E and F terminals there, and we are in the on position, which is down in this particular case. So I'll just turn up the voltage, this is just a DC uh, supply here, and uh, let's see at what point, if any, it uh, does actually trip. Okay, so there we go, that was about 6 volts DC, so a fairly low uh, voltage to get that to go. So let's just reset this, which uh, so is a bit of a challenge because the uh, bar here is obviously a bit damaged. Now we'll just start with a switch on of 5 volts where we were before. Yeah, so that's easily enough to trip the device. And I've just zoomed in a bit there, we can see the actual tripping bar there is still in the attracted position here. If we turn off the power supply there, see it will just drop down. And just go back into position. Yeah, at about 5 volts it's drawing about 171 milliamps, so 
not uh, insignificant. And of course, it's only designed to be on for a very short time. Of course, as soon as this trips, it will have uh, disconnected the supply to the installation and therefore cleared whatever fault was uh, causing it to be powered in the first place. So look there at another of these uh, old voltage operated earth leakage circuit breakers. And so these were typically used on installations which had an earth electrode rather than an earth provided by the electricity supplier. And uh, such things like this have been used for around four decades, mainly due to the fact that they're somewhat unreliable and uh, there are better ways of doing it now. And I've already done a number of videos on these, uh, various different makes and models, and also how they actually operate. So, of course, links to those are in the usual place. But until next time, thanks for watching.